Hey there, my fellow YouTubians. Uh, today is Friday, and uh, I'm posting this video kind of late because I've been busy today. Um, I, uh, since I have the uh, time off that I have, I called my mom and said, how about we get together sometime? And she's like, great, I have Friday off. So I'm like, great, what do you want to do? And she says, well, we could have lunch and maybe we could go to a movie. And I thought to myself, hmm, go to a movie. Is that what I want to do? Does going to a movie seem like something that I would enjoy? Yeah, probably. So I said, what do you want to see? And she says, well, I've read good things about this movie called The Social Network. Would you like to go see that? I'm like, well, I've only seen that one and a half times already. I'd love to. So we went and we had a great time. Um, and uh, today is also important for me because this marks four full weeks that I have not watched One Life to Live. One Life to Live is um, a daytime drama, as they call, or uh, a soap opera uh, that I have been hooked on for quite some time. Um, it all started when, at work, the, uh, the uh, television that plays in the lunchroom would show all my children. And um, I kind of got hooked on that for a while. Excuse the interruption. Um, and I saw the promos for One Like to Live and I thought, that storyline sounds kind of interesting. Uh, I should check that out. And I got hooked on it for, you know, at least two years. But I resolved to go cold turkey on One Life to Live um, for my vacation because I didn't want to have to be at home at a particular time every single day just to watch that show. Um, so uh, yeah, uh, good on me for that, I think. Um, I really enjoy the show a lot, actually. A lot of really fun characters. It's a funny show. It's exciting at times when soap operas are exciting. All My Children just takes itself way too seriously. I don't like that nearly enough. But a major storyline sort of resolved, or at least it took a turn, and, you know, on soap operas, storylines never finish because they air five episodes every single week. That's that's hundreds of episodes every single year, you know, and, uh, you know, I just don't want to, you know, watch it forever. It's a bad idea. There are a lot of shows that I like to uh, keep up with. Um, 24 ended recently, and uh, I kind of called it quits on Grey's Anatomy a while ago, but there are some shows that I never really got around to seeing in the first place, like The Sopranos, Lost, Battlestar Galactica, The Shield, these are all series that I would like to start watching from the beginning on DVD, but um, that's a big time commitment and uh, I don't always want to take the time. With a movie it's very simple. You may watch a movie several times, but it's only, what, at most three hours long when it's done, you don't have to ever see it again, whereas you have to keep watching week after week. And that can be a good thing with a television show because you sort of get emotionally attached to the characters. You live with them in a way that you don't with a normal movie. So. That can be rewarding in itself, but um, all in all, I prefer the films. Uh, speaking of films, uh, I wanted to talk a little bit about 1994 today, which was a fantastic year for movies. Um, my favorites were pretty much the same as everyone else's favorites. Uh, the, uh, my number five pick for the year was uh, Heavenly Creatures by Peter Jackson, which is based on a true story of a couple of teenagers in New Zealand who have kind of a twisted friendship and they end up murdering uh, one of their mothers. Um, it's a true story and Peter Jackson uh, got uh, Melanie Linsky and Kate Winslet to play the leads when no one knew who they were. I uh, really like that movie a lot. It's one of my favorite Peter Jackson films. It's way better than uh, uh, any of the Lord of the Rings movies. And uh, then there's Oleana, David Mamet. Again, he was uh, one of my favorites of 91 and uh, 92 and now here he is again. This is a movie that was uh, based on a play that he um, wrote and he wrote and directed the film and it's one of those movies where he just basically takes the play and just transcribed it to a script. He didn't change hardly anything. It's a two-character drama. It takes place in one room over the course of three long scenes. That's the whole movie right there, you know? And some people, I'm sure, could find that kind of frustrating. And to be honest, if that movie came out this year instead of back in 94, I would probably be frustrated by it too. But back then, I really kind of relished that kind of thing, so I love it. Uh, William H. Macy is the lead. He's terrific in the movie. He plays a college professor who gets into sort of a, a prolonged disagreement with one of his students. Again, I apologize for the interruption. I'm just on my way uh, from Evanston. Gonna go south to um, you know Belmont and, uh, and and do some stuff down there, but I, this is the best time for me to make the video. Um, my number three, number two, and number one favorite movies of 1994, pretty much the same as everyone else in the entire world: The Shawshank Redemption by Frank Darabont, starring Morgan Freeman and Tim Robbins; Pulp Fiction by Quentin Tarantino, of course, Oscar nominee. Both of them were Oscar nominees: John Travolta, Samuel Jackson, Bruce Willis, Christopher Walken, Uma Thurman, etc., 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 and of course. 
Forrest Gump, the best picture, best director, best actor, best visual effects winner uh, for that year. Robert Zemeckis, Tom Hanks, Robin Wright, the wonderful, wonderful Gary Sinise, who I adore. He's a fantastic actor. Um, and yeah, um, I, I, I like this movie better than Pulp Fiction simply because it is slightly paced better. It is, it is a brisker, better moving movie, whereas Pulp Fiction is a little bit, you know, slower. And other than that, it's, it's impossible to compare the two. They're so different from each other. They're both really funny. They're both really exciting. Um, but Forrest Gump has a slight edge. And uh, I uh, put it uh, on my best of the decade list uh, as well. So um, that is it for now. Uh, I will be back tomorrow, of course. So... Please stay tuned if you don't mind. Take it easy. Bye.